The Bible wants us to know about our God. He gives us Isaiah chapter 6. It says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. If the train of his robe filled the temple with glory, the angels above right now are singing, Worthy is the Lamb. Holy, holy, holy is the one true God. There is one God, one true God who deserves to be worshipped today here in Albany. He deserves to be worshipped all over the earth because he is the Lord of heaven and earth. And so we do come here today explicitly when there is a boastful pride event because we want to encourage the people with the truth. We have a message and it is a true message and it's worth hearing. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. Do you hear that? Yes, pride comes before destruction and haughtiness before the fall. We know this is true. We know that God opposes the proud. We know in fact that cities like the Amorites of old, like Sodom and Gomorrah of old, they can store up wrath for themselves and God hears the sins of the people. He hears the cries of babies being murdered. He hears the sexual sins, the grooming of children. He hears these things. And so in the midst of this, we come with you, we come to you with this clear message from Jesus that you must repent. God commands all people everywhere to repent, Acts 17, 30. God commands all people everywhere to repent because there is a day, there is a day where God will judge the earth in righteousness. And when he does, he will do so through the person of Jesus Christ. And you can be assured of this because it is Christ himself who was raised from the dead. He is the firstborn from the dead. And so when we talk about these powerful truths of the gospel, there's the, Hebrews 9.27 tells us that there is an appointed day where each and every one of us will die. And then comes the judgment, much like Mark chapter 8. 34 and following says that if you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you must deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. For everyone who seeks to gain his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for the sake of Christ will find it. For the sake of Christ and his gospel, we're told in Mark chapter 8. But then he says, but then he says, that if you are ashamed of the Son of Man, if you are ashamed of Christ, and his words in this perverse and wicked generation, then he will be ashamed of you when he returns in glory. So yes, we have a gospel message. A message is good news. It's a message of freedom to those who are enslaved to sin. It's a message of humbleness to the proud. It's a message of life to the dead. It's a message of water to the thirsty, of bread to the starving. Yes, that's all a part of our message. It is. But it's very important that we take Jesus at face value when Jesus tells us that we are, we are to not be ashamed of his gospel or his words, that we are ambassadors of Jesus Christ here with the message of reconciliation. Hear this today. Who are we and why are we here? We are ambassadors of Jesus Christ. My friends, we're here because we love you. We love our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength and the power of Christ. That can be true of me and only because of Christ. And because of Christ, we can love our neighbor as ourselves because we were first loved by him when he died on the cross to pay for our sins. And out of this love, we come to you as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Here with a message of reconciliation because everybody who believes in Jesus has eternal life. But whoever does not obey Jesus does not have eternal life. And the wrath of God remains upon him. That would be John 3.36. Do you hear that, my friends? You need to be reconciled to God and Jesus Christ because the wrath of God for sins remains upon all who are rebellious and prideful in their sins. The one who has not repented does not have eternal life. And in fact, you need to be reconciled to the Father through Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but through Jesus Christ. So we're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We're ambassadors because it's not our own authority, my friends. Hello, little girl. It's not our own authority, not our own power. It's not by our own name that we come. We're here in the name of Christ because he has charged us to go. It says, you will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, Acts 1.8.
Matthew 28, 18, that we are to go because Christ has been given all of authority. We are to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching. And he is with us always. So we come with a message that says, Romans 10 says, how faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God, but how can they hear without a preacher? So we come to preach so that you may hear, so that you may hear and be granted faith. For it is by grace that you are saved through faith, and this not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, so that no one may boast. See that word boast? It's related to that word pride. We're not to boast or take pride in anything other than Christ, and particularly in the very thing that God calls a sin. We would, would, we ever, would we ever have gambler's pride? Would we ever have murdering pride? Would we ever have drunkard pride? Adulterer pride? Think about this. If this is true, then why would we have sexual perversion pride? It's a depraved, defiling passion that hands people over so that their very bodies begin to reflect the sinful condition of their soul because they continue to rebel against the good God who is. We're ambassadors of Jesus Christ. He is the one who sends us. We're here with the message of reconciliation because today, if you have not believed, you're under the wrath of God for your sin. And yet Christ is worthy and able to forgive for all who repent and call out to him. Here with the message of reconciliation. As if God was making an appeal to you through us, we plead with you. You see, God doesn't beg, but we do. Because as, as, as terrible as things can be, as violent as these scenes can be, as boastfully gross as these things can be, we do not want to see anyone, anyone burn in hell, perish for eternity in the lake of fire, the eternal fire, where the wrath of God is poured out for sins. No, no, no. We we, we have a pleading with you to be made right to the God of the universe. You see, he commands all people everywhere to repent. Acts 17.30. He commands all people everywhere to repent. We just pass on that word to you. A lot of people don't like us because they say that we're here to judge. My word to you is really what we're doing is talking to you about the judgment that God has declared. That's all we are. We are ambassadors. We are not the judge. We are ambassadors of the judge here to tell you that what they're boasting about just a few feet down the road, what they are boasting about in their sin, how they are twisting and taking God's rainbow and using it as an opportunity to boast in sin. My friends, that's an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. Do you not know that God made that rainbow? in Genesis chapter 9. It's his rainbow. It's a promise of his mercy. Everybody today, would you join us in celebrating the mercy of God, not boasting in your pride. The rainbow is God's rainbow. It's a sign when he flooded the earth that he will never flood the earth again. There's a promise there that there will be seasons that the earth will remain until the rainbow is a promise that the earth will remain, that you will wake up tomorrow and see the sun if the Lord hasn't appointed that day for you to meet him. But the earth will continue, its movements, the seasons will continue. There will be no flood to destroy the earth. God makes a promise. It's his rainbow, a sign of his mercy. But it's a reminder that God told Noah 120 years and then he will flood the earth. So repent. Noah was a preacher of righteousness while he was building the ark. They had 120 years and only eight were saved. And only Noah was righteous, my friends. The same thing has happened today. Because God gave us the rainbow, which is a reminder that he flooded the earth in judgment, he promises in a closet? that he will never flood the earth again, but when he returns, it will be with fire. My friends, you will not be judged with water the earth will be judged with fire. That's what the rainbow means. So when you see the rainbow, remember, when I'm you see the rainbow, you. remember, you should celebrate God's mercy because he promised to never flood the earth again with water. But then you should repent and celebrate his mercy because he promises to return 
in the person of Jesus Christ, and when he does, he will destroy the earth with fire. That's why the rainbow is God's rainbow. That's why we're just ambassadors. It's not my rainbow. I'm not the judge, but he is. It's appointed for you to die once, and then comes the judgment. What? What do you get by being here? What do I get by being here? Yeah, like what's your point in all this? If you know that it's not going to help any of them or change any of them, because it's not. Oh, I believe that. I believe that the preached word could change. I think everybody in there could repent and cry out to God today. But they're not going to, because this is love. Are you God? Do you know that they're not going to? Are you God? No, I'm not. No. Exactly. No. So what do you personally get by being here? So I love worshiping God. So I'm encouraging everybody to worship God out here. When we read His word, if you. If you, yeah, if you pay attention, I've been actually, half the words I've been saying, yeah, so half of the words have been quotes straight from the Bible. I try to reference it when I'm saying it, too, okay. right? So, again, so I'm just talking about the Bible. That they're going to burn is worshiping and that's No, if they don't up. repent. No, I, I, I think... You don't think it's messed up to tell people that they're going to burn? No, I'm, I'm not telling anybody they're going to burn. I'm saying if you don't repent, you will. That's exactly what you're saying. If you don't repent, it's a big difference. Uh, obedience to Christ for preaching the gospel. And you can't, like, go to a church and preach the gospel? We can, and we will Sunday. We will Sunday morning to the glory of God. Why just Sunday? Isn't that kind of messed up that you're That's why we're here, preaching the gospel, yeah. We're bringing the gospel to people who need it. We don't need it, though. Yeah, he says the sick, he says the sick need a physician, and these people today are very, very sick in their sin. I didn't know how to No, Jesus is the great physician. Yeah, he'll heal your soul. Actually, it says that we are his body, so us being here in the gospel is is an extension of the grace and mercy of God to you today. So it's a blessing for you here. It's a blessing for you to hear the preaching of the word today. Absolutely, it's a grace. Oh, you you grew up Baptist. Yes, sir. So that means, but you can never not be. You can never be a Christian and then decide to not be. Like you either are or you aren't. I'm not Christian. You're not. No. So you you why would you not confess Christ as Lord? I did when I was younger. I was baptized. Being baptized doesn't matter. See, oh, see no. you know what Satan, Satan, you know Satan's message is actually to thine own self be true. So most people here are actually Satanists because their goal is to worship only what they want to worship. Sir, yeah. No, no, it's not about respecting others. It's about loving yourself. It's about loving yourself. That you can you can use the word respect. It's not about respecting yes, others. It's, it's about, about loving yourself. It's about not raping, killing, anything. Oh, it's, it's it, it celebrates killing babies in the womb. You're hypocritical. It celebrates killing babies in the womb. The satanic temple has included a ritual to murder babies in the womb, right? What? No, we should take care of babies when they're born. I agree. We should take care of babies when they're born.